Welcome to our web exclusive. I'm Mike Montecalvo along with Eyewitness News Analyst Lieutenant General Reginald Centracchio. We're going to talk about the latest developments in the Jordanian pilot that was executed by the Islamic State militants. But first, General, what everybody's been talking about probably for the last week and a half, two weeks, is the snow. And it just doesn't seem like it's going to uh, let up with uh, more snow in the forecast. Your take so far, let's say statewide, and how the DOT has handled it in cleaning up the roads. Statewide, I think it has done an exceptional job. All of the interstates have been clear, uh, especially the access and uh, exits for the, uh, the uh, I-95 and, and certainly 195, uh, 44, and so on and so forth. All have been exceptional from my point of view. Then we get into the city of Providence, and that's a different story. Okay, talk about uh, the EMA and their involvement, because when we saw Gina Raimondo, the governor, hold a news conference, she had Peter Gaynor and everyone else behind her, the colonel, too. And it was a lot of communication going on, and she said that's what really worked. Okay, a over a week away from the blizzard, do they continue to communicate just in case something else is coming Yes, up? they do. In fact, they're, they're meeting, uh, I would suggest, over the next day or so to talk about tomorrow, which is another small storm, but nevertheless a storm. But I think the more significant one is being suggested would be Saturday, uh, Sunday into Monday, where you may get substantial snow. One of the major uh, challenges will be to what you do with the snow that's already there. You already have sidewalks that are not cleared. You have a tremendous problem. as So what do you do with the mounds of snow? Where do you put it? Uh, a lot of it's being taken away by front end loaders and so on. But the bottom line is if you get another six to eight inches and perhaps more, you've got a real big problem within the city itself. Well, you know, the cities are also already talking about it. They're running out of money now. Yeah. At this point, just for salt, sand, and removal. They are. And so you go into a deficit, as we have seen in previous years. Uh, I don't think money is the problem. I think the assets and the resources to do it are the problem. Uh, I also see that there are some significant problems in the maintenance of vehicles within the, the greater Providence area. Uh, if you don't have vehicles to do this and you can't bring them in from elsewhere, that just exacerbates the problem, given, seeing as what we, uh, we're, uh, really what we're experiencing right now. And there's a possible significant storm. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Of course, we're going to keep track of that. Let's uh, talk about what's been going on overseas. Uh, General uh, Jordan has put two Al-Qaeda prisoners that they had to death. What are the ramifications with the Jordanian pilot that was captured and executed? There are several things that I've seen as it uh, unfolds. First and foremost is there seems to be a divisiveness between the allegiance to ISIS as well as Al-Qaeda. These are al-Qaeda prisoners. Normally you would have somewhat of a bonding between ISIS and, and al-Qaeda, but those prisoners were al-Qaeda prisoners. Jordan took them out, absolutely the right thing to do. My concern is why did they do it when they perhaps should have known that those, the pilot was already executed some 30 days ago, at least based upon what we can see now. Okay, so that's the question, but if you look at the video that they, uh, they sent out, it looks like it's well produced, that it took some time for them to do this, so that's why they probably didn't release it. Your argument is, why didn't Jordan find out that he had already been executed? Once again, showing the divisiveness and the, the looseness within the coalition between the, the Arab states and the uh, states that are against ISIS. If that was known, and it should have been known, that it that was uh, executed uh, some 30 days ago. Why wasn't that shared with Jordan? Because Jordan was already making some kind of a deal to release uh, two prisoners uh, for that pilot. If he was already executed, uh, there's some certain uh, big lapse in the security efforts there. All right, so the video shows, the, uh, ex the video of the executed pilot shows a close relationship with uh, Jordan's King Abdullah and President Obama. Uh, obviously, they are tight with us. They're a close ally with the United States. So what is the United States' next move at this point? The United States has got to demonstrate. It has to absolutely demonstrate that it is committed to dealing with ISIS as Jordan is. And what's happening now, as I see it, will continue the air war. Uh, but we're expecting Jordan and other countries to conduct the ground war. That's not working from what I can see. And it'll continue to just give them the ability, by them I mean ISIS, to continue to move forward and, and gain more territory. That's a scary proposition because we cannot win the air war and win the entire war. It has, there has to be ground troops. There has to be a, an intelligence level to be able to pinpoint those targets, even from the air. And as of this date, February 4th, that is the big question right now. When does the United States get involved with the uh, ground yeah, troops? I don't think you're going to see it real well, quick time, but I think you're going to see something that has to ramp up beyond just being involved in the air war. All right, General, as always, thank you for your thoughts, and thanks for watching.